<clears throat> Liverpool, we everybody. Um, just back to talk a little bit uh, now about the midfield. We got the information about uh, Fabinho being out. I think it's four to six weeks allegedly. Um, but yeah, I got Gary coming back, and uh, finally, 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 the debut. <laughs> My man, Jason. Jason, what's up, man? Yeah, not much, man. I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good, good. Gary, you cool, right? Yeah, I'm good, bro. How are you? Good. I'm all right. Um, so let's just get into this, man. We've been talking on, on Twitter a little bit about it. Uh, so I felt like we should, if we had time, just talk about it together um, on this kind of platform. And um, just from the jump, obviously, uh, when you read the story or when you, when you heard about it, I come to you first, Jason. What were your first thoughts and and, and learning that we're going to miss Fabinho for that significant amount of time? This very disappointing. Disappointing because he off he he offers so much, offers so much defensively, and and now I'm noticing he's he's starting to develop a good relationship with Trent. You know, he gives mm. him a lot of good balls, um, passes over the top for the front three, winning possession back in the midfield so much. I mean, Ginny, like I was saying in in the group, Ginny's a good replacement. Well, mm-hmm. I see him as more of a player who. He can hold the ball well. You know, he's good on his feet. He can get out of trouble. But in terms of breaking up attacks, uh, I don't really see see Ginny doing that for us. It's going to be a big miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Gary, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I've got to agree with, it with, um, with the point you said about Wijnaldum. It's it's also breaking um, play up, but also getting the ball out of his feet quicker. Um, yeah. I don't think he does that enough. I think he takes too many touches on the ball. Uh, Way too many way too many touches on the ball and the thing was as you said with Fabinho those sort of over the top through balls even to Mane or to Salah to Pimpino those balls he's playing over the top the little diagonal ones to um, um, Trent or Robertson was just at the minute priceless he, yeah he, he's, he's been world class he's actually you know a better defensive midfielder in the world at the minute he's playing um, the way he is um so we're definitely going to miss him. I think you saw even against um, against Napoli, um, he, he, just his presence in midfield, breaking breaking attacks up high up the pitch. You know, we're, we're going to see more teams possibly getting um, getting higher in, into our eighteen yard box and possibly yeah. more chances because he's the one that breaks up counter attacks with his with his with his um, obviously they call him with, long legs. Yeah, long legs. So we're, we're definitely going to miss him, but. I mean, is that maybe the fixtures just suit us that we can just hopefully just get through some of these games and scrum it out because, you know, it's going to be very, very tough um, without him in the field. Because even when Henderson and Ronaldo play, he's, as as the, as the further forward players, he's, even as a defensive midfielder as a six, he's the, he's more creative than both of them combined. You know what I mean? With, with, um, with the quality he has on, on the pitch. So, yeah, it's a big miss. But we, I, think, I, I think we should be through these games. But what um which so he he's so obviously he misses Brighton anyway even if he wasn't injured mm. so he misses Everton yeah Bournemouth, Bournemouth. and then the the the, the oh. decider Champions League decider decider with Salzburg Watford uh, Watford oh, no, damn. No. Leicester Wolves Sheffield probably there's a lot of games yeah when when you get to listing games it starts to look more of a daunting task and I'll say this um. I agree, with both of, I agree with both of you guys and everything you said. And, and the thing is, in a typical situation, if it was Emery Chan or, I mean, most people's DM and what that means for a team, then it, it, you don't really look at it that, that much. But because Fab can do so many other things besides just that typical DM role, which is breaking up play, um, it's slightly more devastating. You know, as you yeah. guys said, how, how good he is on the ball, dictating play. A lot of time he is the quarterback of what we do, everything whether it's going forward or coming back or whatever. So, um, and, and the, I guess those teams where they, where they have that um, kind of uh, defensive block, he is the guy that can kind of unlock that. Um, mm. I mean, almost continue if, if you will. And I don't mean necessarily on shots, but just putting the ball over the top, finding passes to the right, uh, to the left, as far as like leading guys on, maybe Trent or Robertson on the left. So, you know, whoever plays there, which we'll get into now, I'll, I'll stick with you, Gary. Uh, who do you see playing there? Do you think this – do you think – yeah, just tell me who you think who you see playing there in, in the meantime right now. Who would you like? Yeah, I mean, is, is it is it is it obvious genius for you or? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's probably the obvious choice that's going to be playing most of the games there because I can't. I think I think since um, Henderson's moved out of that number six role, I think Klopp's done everything not to put him back there. 
You know, we don't really see them with a cameo performance there for 10 minutes or so. It's like he just doesn't play there anymore. Um, I mean, Lallana will probably be another option there. I mean, I mean, this is what I mean. Lallana is six now. Um, but what is sorry to interrupt you? But what is what does Lallana actually offer in the six? <laughs> because the last time the last time I saw him play there, he lost the ball more than anyone else on the pitch yeah, against Aston Villa, wasn't it? Um, and yeah. so he he hasn't got the legs anymore. It's not the same Adam Lallana that's buzzing on the pitch. It's not and the and and I think that's the reason why Klopp Klopp wants to move him there because he doesn't have the legs anymore. But yeah. the, the the pace the pace in the game is just too quick, regardless where you're playing on the pitch. Yeah. I wanted I wanted him gone. Legs. I wanted him gone in the summer if I was if you know I wanted him gone last summer um, because I just didn't see what 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 he was going to give us this season. Mm. Uh, you know, and I'd I'd rather have I'd rather have Gruwich play there. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah, he's doing. He's playing well mm. at, uh, at Berlin, isn't he? Now see, now, now see, that would be a good. That would be a good one right there. Yeah, so I just I don't understand really. I mean, Wijnaldum's going to pro- probably be the obvious choice there. He would he would do a job. He will do a job. Uh, but as I said, we're still going to miss a lot of um, what Robinho gives to us. Um, but as the fixtures do sort of favour us in this sort of early period with these sort of games like Brighton, Everton, Watford home games, both yes. the way. Yes. You know, when we get into when we get into the club, we're, we're going to start. Um, you know, we're going to start suffering more now because. The more games we play, as I said, like the Salzburg game, and when we get to Club World Cup, when we get to Le- and coming back after the Club World Cup or Leicester away, that's going to be a tough game. Wolves at home, Sheffield. These t- these games are going to be they're going to get tougher and tougher because we're going to be playing more and more games in three games in four or five days in six days. You know, with the Leicester Wolves and Sheffield game at the end of the year, so you know, it's a big blow. And the thing is, when a player's up for four weeks during time, like for example August or September. They're not missing too many games, but it's the most busiest time of of, um, of the year, and that's just, it's just like ten or eleven games, and so I think that's a big disappointment. Really. Do they do they get well, into, into time, specifics yeah. um, in terms of the injury? What is it? Is it a sprain, ligament? I don't know. I, I don't know really. I mean, I, I haven't even looked at the back of the injury. I know that I think it's Le- Lazana. What, what happened? Did Lazana? Yeah, he, hand- I think he, he he fell. He fell on his leg. He ran into him. He twisted his ankle. Yeah. 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 It's wrong time, wrong it didn't look that bad. Like in live motion, when they showed the instant replay, though, you can tell it, was, it looks pretty brutal. Mm, um, yeah. Not that he meant it, but before I come to you, Jason, on who you prefer, um, how does it work? It, it, if we wanted to bring back, say, Grujic now, we couldn't do that now, right? Or in January, or could we? It depends on it depends on the contract or, or the terms in which we loan him out. I mean, sometimes okay. they have a clause, a callback clause, but not most, not not for not for top flight competitions. That's usually with like lower leagues and stuff. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Is it pretty? Is it pretty straightforward for you, Jason? As far as who you prefer, there is that Ginny Hendo. I mean, in an in an in an ideal world, I'd love to see Ginny, Box, and Naby. To be honest, mm. but I mean, this is when I'm not the manager. You see, Klopp. I'm yeah, it's 100% got a sure. Yeah, I'm 100% sure he's gonna go with. Um, uh, Brexit plus one, or whatever, <laughs> whatever yeah. you call it, but it's, dis- it's, it's, it's disappointing to me because I feel like as a club we're at a level now where, honestly, I mean, known as a workhorse, granted, but what else does he offer besides that? Hmm. Besides working hard and penalty. Who's that, Lallana or oh, uh, Milner? Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. What else does he offer besides penalties? And yeah, the, odd, he, I mean, the 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 odd assist here, there, yeah, you know, like that's that's what he is at this for point. For me, for me, at, at the level we're playing, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's enough. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't, I, I can't disagree with you there. I can't disagree with you there. I mean, I think if we had James on here, it'd probably be full of um, what's the guy he talks about all the time at Bournemouth? Um, um Harry Wilson. <laughs> Wilson, it, it'd, probably, it'd probably be Wilson show. That's, but that's twenty twelve. That's a two thousand and twelve Liverpool player. <laughs> we're past, we're, we're, we're past that now. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah. I, I think going going on to Brighton, it's it's really really imperative, really important that we we at least start to have an idea of who we're going to see there. Um, I know it's just one game, and it, it's going to probably take time for us to figure out what Klopp is going to do. But I do think this is yet another chance. And I think Gary might have said this in the in the Twitter uh, chat that. Um, there's there's one thing about this. Yes, it's it's almost like a blessing in disguise. I think is what you said. It's almost like yeah, we're we're, we're a little bit down because it's like damn, you know, we don't really need injuries right now. 
um, in the form that we're going, especially not in that area. I mean, you could probably pick a maybe one other spot where you wouldn't mind somebody not being gone, but Fabinho is so important that it's tough to see him go. But at the same time, hopefully this opens up a window for, for Naby to get a, um, a string of games. And let's just, let's just segue to Naby and, and Gary, I come to you first. Um, you spoke about it a little bit earlier, but, uh, do you think this is it for Naby? If if he if he especially now with 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 um with Fabinho going out, there's no no doubt in my mind that we'll start seeing Naby. I, I kind of thought we'd start seeing him anyway, just because it feels like he's hopefully back. I know he's got sick we'll recently, but as far as injuries, we'll see, we'll see him more now now Fabinho's um, injured. Right, and so I'm saying like, do you think this is his last chance, quote unquote? If he if he doesn't if he doesn't perform well in this in this string of games that he's we're, we're assuming he's going to get. Do you think that's it for him, or does just depend on his his injuries and stuff? Well, I don't think it's his last chance because he's still going to be here next season. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, um, it's not his last chance, but it, it, it's it, it's a chance where he has to take and he has to start. He has to start performing because if he has had when he when he's been fit and he's played. Let me just say, I don't think he's been. You know, he's, I don't think he's set the world right because well, if you look at if you look at his performances, I think Arsenal the Carabao Cup. You know, where a game you expect him to be bossing it, I thought it was dreadful. MK uh, Dons. MK Dons. But, 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 but also, I guess for me, what I mean is like last chance in terms of, of course, not for Klopp or the club, but I mean, I feel yeah, like yeah. As, far as, as far as the fan base yeah, is definitely, concerned. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it has to be because the thing is, we, we, we put so much sort of hope, um, we pin so much hope into him um, because when Coutinho left, we thought, you know, he's not the same sort of player as Coutinho. But he's a player that can um, take the ball from deep and drive with it, create, you know, a prime example being what he did out of Trafford, you know, that sort of intelligent um, intelligent play, um, you know, grabbing the ball, just driving a bit more direct than the midfielders have with Ronaldo and, and Milner, these sort of players. So he's going to have to step up now. You know, first of all, it's about staying fit and proving the club that he can stay fit for, you know, for a long period of time and consistently being uh, available for matches. But second of all, when he when he does, if, when he's ready to play, he needs to be on it, you know. Because look at Oxley Chamberlain. Oxley Chamberlain is ahead of him right now in the pecking order, you know. So I mean, even even Lallana's ahead of him, ahead of him in the pecking order. Uh, I wouldn't like, go. I wouldn't go that far. No, I mean, I mean, in t- well, if you look at in terms of what he's he's played, what, oh, what, he's, yeah, yeah, the minutes he's been playing. Not that I think he's a better player or anything, but who who Klopp is actually favouring the most and bringing on in matches has been him because away at Villa. He started, you know. I mean, Lallana started, and six K could have easily played in that game, you know. And and who's coming to the matches? Is it, it Lallana, Keita? Is it Chamberlain, Keita? It's, it's it's at the minute. Lallana's ahead of him. Henderson's ahead of him. He's yep. so far down the picking order. So now there's a lot of games for him to come in and take his chance. Because to be honest with you, I don't blame fans that are that run out of patience because it's been a year and a half now. And if mm. he ends the season, how he's been playing. Or how he's, you know, this inconsistency of not being, um, or, or being injured and on and off. Then that's two years now. You know, it's okay in the first year, but in the second year, then he has to start really asking questions. Uh, do, do any of you guys think? I, I guess I come to you first, Jason. Do you think this is a situation? This may be a shot in the dark, a little far fetched, but can you see maybe Klopp going back to a we haven't seen it seen it in a while, but a four two three one, maybe having I don't know, Nabby Genie sitting. With um, a Shakiri or what, Ox, the, um, or... the double pivot. Yeah, could you see that just just to make up for not having Fab, or is that just a little bit too much right now in the season? Um, no, I think that might be a bit too much. I can't. I, I don't really see Klopp changing anything mm-hmm. tactically mm-hmm. Okay. with the players we have. I mean, maybe if if we do have a few additions in January, he can maybe mm-hmm. integrate some players into the team. But right now, I think he's going to stick with the with the four three three. Okay, Gary. So, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Susan. Go ahead. No, four, 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 three. My mistake. But um, I mean, I would like to see it. I would like mm-hmm. to see. I'd like to see maybe Ginny and uh, Naby and Holding, or Ginny and Henderson, and maybe have Box mm-hmm. Box in the middle there on his own. But I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah, think yeah. Klopp, Klopp to me seems like a system guy. You know, it seems like you know they worked on a system and that's what they're going to implement. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't really. He doesn't usually make changes. I mean, he'll make a change maybe during a game, like mm-hmm. we see Hendo going off wide to the right and stuff like that. But may, a major change like that, I, I don't see that happening. 
Okay. Uh, Gary, what do you think? You, you agree or you, you think there might be a situation where he, he might feel like, well, look, Fab's out. I got to try something different. You think he'll just uh, persist with the same same formation? No, I agree with Jason completely because I just think he's going to stick with the 4 I think he's just going to find a solution, you know, in terms of players in the squad just to um, replace him. You know, he'll do that as a case of changing. These players will be getting more minutes. Um, Obviously, due to that injury, Shakiri, I just don't see a, a place for him. Uh, even yeah. though I just don't see a place for him apart from four two three one. Since he's, I mean, how many minutes did he get? Um, how many, how many minutes has he even got in twenty nineteen? I'd love to know how many minutes he's actually got in twenty nineteen. And, you know, and 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 sorry, sorry to interrupt, but what's yeah. crazy is when when he does play, he's most of the time so influential. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He either he plays in a good ball. A good assist, mm, scores, good a, scores, scored two goals at Old Trafford. I remember the game we we're losing. Um, Chelsea played the ball into Sturridge. Mm-hmm. Sturridge scored yeah, that big, well. Big he assist does. against Barcelona too. Exactly. So I don't know. It's a strange one. Maybe I don't know what he does in training that club doesn't like, but it's a strange one to me. He's got the experience as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at that game, like sort of Brighton at home, you know, I don't, I think that that'd be perfect game for him to maybe. Switch yeah. to four three one or a game like yeah. Watford um, coming up. You know these sort of games. Cause we we need to start using these players. You know we need to start using these players because they haven't played football. They fit the fresh. They got a point to prove. You know and games like Watford at home or a Brighton at home. You know it's, he's that sort of creative creative spark. And we saw that last season. And you have to you have to remember because you touched in the group chat and it was a great point. We said you know we we were, we were scoring goals in December last year and we were playing the, we were playing a four two three one last year. In yeah. That sort of, where we, where we beat Bournemouth um, four 0 away, we beat Burnley three one away. So that's a, you know, seven goals already. We beat four. We beat Newcastle four 0 at home. We beat Arsenal five one. So all these games we're playing the four two three one. You know Palace at home scored four goals in that game, and after that he just vanished. So here he just vanished, and we never saw him again. So, so, so am, am I basically hearing that both of you guys would, would like to see a change, a change of formation, but you just don't think Klopp would do it? I mean, no, I just think that in certain games, maybe like an odd game like a Brian at home or what for them, there's no reason yeah, why yeah. We, we can't play that sort of game. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, if we do switch it up, I think th- th- those are your opportunities to do it. And uh, no disrespect to those guys, but as you said earlier, it is... It does feel good to know that um, these fixtures, um, although won't be easy, but they're, they're, they're fixtures where you feel like Liverpool will have enough to, to, to beat these teams. And if you're going to do any kind of experimentation or trying different things with the formation, I think now is, is the time to do it. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it does feel like a really a grand opportunity for, for Ox and Abby to, to finally yeah. get in and, 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 and get some work. And, and just, you know, so so we because we... we about our, our bench and our and the depth, and some of us might say like like they're up, but it's 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 players like this that can really you know shut some of us up that we if we feel like you know we don't have enough and, and you know when when guys like Hindo or Genie or in this case obviously Fab go down, we do have guys that can come in and, and step off and, and and play well. So it'd be interesting to see what what Shakiri does do. Um, again, I I don't think any of us really see him as an attacking midfielder. So it feels like if he does play, it'll be more of a, at a wings position, On the wing. maybe a number ten. Um, we spoke about that earlier. The number ten, maybe that's something that that we could see. Um, Who, who's the number ten? You say Shakiri. Uh, Shakiri. Uh, I mean, if he's going to play, I think he's going to be right wing because I yeah, yes, yeah, I think same, same. I think what's going to happen is going to put Firmino in the ten. I, I don't know. I don't think he just sort of trust. Maybe, maybe Shakiri's work rate is something why he doesn't play him. I'm not too sure. This is just me just bringing up some random points that mm. you know, that why he might not be playing. Um, and why he's out of favour recently in the past season. Because as I said, has he even played 300 minutes of Premier League football this this Premier League in 2019? I'd love to know. I don't think he has. But well, hasn't, th- he been, has, hasn't he been injured for the most part, though? Yes. Yeah, so he has been. I'm talking about... Like, did, but he, he has played... He, yeah. No, but I'm talking about... Like, did, last did he year. play in the charity shield? No, he played like 12 no, minutes. No, he didn't. He played 12 minutes. and then he played, he played like, what? 12 oh, okay. minutes. 15 minutes he came on, but and then he didn't come. He didn't play again up until Newcastle, and then he got injured. So he wasn't okay, playing. Okay. But even last year, after Leicester, um, I think he had. I, I think after Leicester, I read a stat. So Leicester was in January last year. We drew one one. That was his last start. Uh, I think he got like eight, 70 minutes of Premier League football in four months. So and continue that on. 
you know, it's like he's played like less than 100 minutes of Premier League football in in in, in like 10 months, which is ridiculous, really. I know he's been injured for a couple of months, but even before that, he wasn't getting minutes. You know what I mean? So, 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 what do you think Klopp is thinking this moment as far as January? Do you do you think? It's it's a, a panic situation to think. Okay, well now I got to go into the window. Do you think it, it makes sense, uh, Gary? I'll stick with you to to go and and seek out a player or two, uh, well at least a player in January. Yeah, I think we know Klopp's not not that manager to panic by. Um, yeah, you know, and I think by January, I think Fabinho will probably be back by then. Um, you know, early January, so it's that time anyway. So he'll be back by then. But even if he was out for two months. Seriously doubt Klopp with anyone. Seriously doubt Klopp would go about, um, out and buy anyone. Because I remember yeah. Mane, Mane was remember a couple of years back. Oh, Mane is out of Africa of Nations. Let's go. We were shouting for Quincy Promise. Remember a couple of years back when he was out yeah. there. Yeah. Nations. You know, we all screamed. Who was, who was the last player we we bought in January? Was it Stephen Corker? Corker, <laughs> no, yeah. Corker, yeah. So we oh, Van Dyke, Van Dyke, Van Dyke. But yeah, before that. But before that, yeah, we we don't really dip into the market too much in January, to be honest. It would yeah. be nice to see. It would be nice to see someone come in, but I think unlikely. I think Van Dyke was a deal that was basically already done because I think already done. Yeah. So it was just. It was I, really... I mean, and, yeah, and I think I think the Coutinho move as well kind of made made yeah that's true as well yeah made them get him in early as well. Hmm. I, I I mean, I I got a sneaky feeling. I don't. I, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, but I got a sneaky feeling this isn't the last injury we're gonna see. Um, and so. Do you, do you get a guy and just have him sit and wait in case something happens? I don't. I'd probably not. Um, and, and then you wonder who, if you do bring a guy in, is it just for cover in case somebody gets hurt? Because who are you going to – I'm assuming you, we bring in a midfielder, for example, even though we have seven. Um, you know, what role do they play for the rest of the season? You know, it's almost like you're just getting some kind of safety net in case, which probably doesn't make sense. So – yeah, I don't. I don't really see much happening in January. I think as as supporters, we always like to see it's, it's kind of like a Christmas gift, if you will. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I, I kind of agree with you guys. I don't really see anything happening um, in January. We just gotta hope that the guys can stay fit. Um, but you know, it's a long season, and these guys are playing a lot of football, and we just dodged a chance to um, to have guys have a break. You know, for, for example, against Salzburg, we all know what happened there. Um, so the list of games that you guys list, I think Gary did. Um, uh, that we have coming up. Think about uh, big matches like Salzburg and things of that nature. Yeah, um, Everton. It, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what we do, man, in that in that position in that role. Um, because you know, again, like we said, Fabinho just offers so much, and I just wonder if he'll not just persist with, persist with one guy. If he'll do like a by committee thing, or if you'll do like, all right, I feel I feel more comfortable playing Lalana in a game against, you know, Brighton, for example, or Bournemouth, but then against Everton, you know, I'll go with Dini in the six um, and things of that nature. But again, I just think the more important thing is not not necessarily who plays at the six, although that's important, but it's more so what the other guys can do around him. You know, yeah. is is if uh, if Ox or Naby is in, can they can they commit and do the work that Milner? And, and and Genie do on those those other two sides, you know, uh, whoever it is that's playing on the right and left side of the midfield, can they can they, that's that's not named Genie or Hendo? Can they do the hard work um, or close enough to the hard work that that um, Milner or Hendo or Genie does? And and Jason, do you think you think Naby and Oz can do that? For example, if he if he goes with the Genie in the six. Let's just say in the next game, go with Genie in the um, six, Naby and Ox. Do you feel comfortable that they they can do the defensive work as well? I mean, I'm comfortable with Ox. I mean, I haven't mm-hmm. seen enough of Naby to, to right, say right. whether he will or not. But I mean, Ox, he, he's he's a determined guy. Um, he's strong mentally, which I like. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think he can do as much work. Will he be as effective? I don't know because he does like to go forward a lot. Um, but I'm confident that you know he could he could fill in a void for Hendo, especially because Hendo, if you really think about it, he runs around a lot, but he doesn't do much. It's like I see him trying to chase down players that he's he's never gonna catch. Right. But, you know, it looks good. It looks good when you're watching, but what what is he really doing? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I'm, I mean, Ox, yeah, Naby. The thing with Naby, I don't know his his mentality. I'm not sure. I don't know whether he he's maybe afraid that he might injure himself again, but he, he 
when he's playing, he just doesn't seem committed. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like mm-hmm. you get you get guys who are, who are not in the team, like Ox and Lovren. When they come on, you know they look hungry. Do you know what I mean? But mm. Kato for me just seems a bit lethargic, and I'm not sure if that's due to his injury or or his his mentality. And it's it's concerning for me because I, I just hope it's not another storage situation where you know he comes in, plays a few games, has a little niggle. And then has has another another three weeks out of the squad, Do you know what I mean? Because it's it's going to hinder his his development. You know what I mean? The rest yeah. of the squad are going to be playing well together, and he's just going to be you know in and out, in and out, in and out. Mm. And yeah, it's concerning, but I mean, hopefully it's, it all goes well for him. Um, I mean, I'm giving him to the end of this season. I don't know if I don't know if I could 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 stick with him. Throughout next season, if 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 it's the same situation where he just yeah. gets injured, comes back in, goes out, do you know what I mean? Uh, Gary, your feelings on uh, Ox and, and Abby being able to do some some of the work that uh, the other guys do in our team in the field? Yeah, I think I think Chamberlain can definitely do that because I think if you remember in the seventeen eighteen season, I think Chamberlain was he was on board to start the Champions League final. Started big games like City at home, City away, and yeah. was um, you know midfield that because the thing with Chamberlain is like he can he can do the full job. I mean, I, I know Aaron, you don't sort of I don't know if you agree with it. I think you just kind of you still don't like trust him. I don't know, but I do yeah. personally because as he, as he said, he is um he, he he's got he's got a great attitude, with Chamberlain, and he's come back from long term injury and he just he looks very very hungry and he's coming to yeah. the team. And also, I think was a big turning point for him was. The international break, the performance against United, where he came on, that sort of gave him that little boost into the season because he came up half an hour and he looked a, a major threat. Then he got the goals against Genk, so I scored against Arsenal again, again, again another goal against uh, Genk, scored for England. Then just you know he's he's sort of finding his feet again. So I think anyway, I think even if you're playing like a team against Brighton at home or Everton at home, you, you don't need. I think I don't think as I said I, with Keita, I'm not too sure on him yet. But if you're playing a team like Brighton at home, Everton at home, there's no reason for us not to have Chamberlain in that team, uh, especially, especially if you're going to have Wijnaldum and Henderson in that team. You know, you don't need the Milner in there as well to add to it. You know, Chamberlain's perfectly fine of doing the, 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 the defensive work. He's quick, he's strong as well. Um, and he can do the job going forward. I mean, saw against Napoli, he had a good impact on the game when he came on. As I said, I still felt he should have come on for... For Fabinho in, in the first half, um, but I think Jason made a brilliant point. I think because I, me and you had the chat earlier, Aaron, we we touched on it as well. I said that case I sort of needs to look up to players like Chain and Lover. And it may sound silly, but when yeah. Lover when Lover, when Lover comes in, he's coming and, and and he's he's benched Joe Gomez, where we thought he he's we thought Joe Gomez was an understudy to Joe Matic. Yeah. Um, and you know Lover's come out of nowhere with a great performance against Leicester, and then he just. He's been started consistently. He started our biggest game of the season against City. Started against Spurs. Started against Villa away. Started against Palace, Napoli, and he scored uh, obviously um, on on um, well, scored yesterday. So you know he needs to take a leap out of their book because when they've been benched or when they've had long term injuries, they've come into the team and hit the ground running straight away. Um, so as I said, at the minute, I just I don't have this hundred percent faith in Keita. Really, and it's, it's disappointing, really, because I thought he's gonna. You look back at the first game of the season, and we think, what play we've gone out and see. Yeah, I'll get to my, my feeling on Ox in a second, but I think it's obviously, it's obviously we've shown in a couple of positions, um, goalkeeper and obviously Matip, that we have guys that can step up. Now, Adrian was a total blessing, and I, I he did way better than I thought he could could even come close to doing and you see the West Ham keeper now I know Fabianski is up but their goalkeeper they have now is yeah, is a joke I don't, I don't I don't know how you let Adrian go for that but um so so it's it's nice to see that th- those two key positions goalkeeper and, and center back we've got guys right now who've stepped up and all we can really do is hope that whoever that role is whether it's by by committee or whether he just chooses one guy Lalana, Genie, whoever can do that role <laughs> obviously I don't I don't think he's gonna I can't imagine him having Genie there Solely until Fab is back. That doesn't because Genie just offers a bit more, I think. So, I, I, but we'll see. But as far as uh, Ox, it's more of what I think Klopp thinks he can do. 
I think the injury he had was really, really serious. And for me, it, it looks like Klopp doesn't trust him fully to have him from the start. Otherwise, I think he would have done that in the league. Um, <clears throat> I know he probably started in a couple, couple cup games or against Arsenal or whatever. But it looks like now, or up, in, up until now, maybe he'll start starting him now. But up until this point, it feels like Klopp sees him more of a, a guy that could come in and make a difference. Yeah, impact, fresh legs. Impact yeah, but, but playing him at 90 minutes, I'm just like, ah. I don't know if Klopp feels like he not that he can't do it, but if he doesn't want to put that stress on him for ninety minutes playing yeah. defensive and trying to be that spark. So but now I don't I don't know if we have much of a choice. I think you, you gotta look at Ox um in the Brighton game for sure, in my opinion. You, you gotta look at him from the start. And if not from the start, we can't be waiting until super late in the game to bring him on. That's the whole thing in my opinion. Um I think even in the in the uh the who do we just uh the Napoli game. The Napoli game came on too. I mean late. I, I, yeah, I'm over it now, but that's just too late, man. And and yeah. the trend change for me. If you're trying to win that game, you've got to bring those dudes on earlier. Because it, yeah. it seemed like at one point both both managers were feeling like, you know what? Well, I don't want to say this because I think Klopp obviously maybe later or not, I think he showed that he was trying to go get the game. But and in, in moments there it felt like both managers were thinking, you know what, let's just take the, the draw here and, and see who see who comes out on top. Uh, in the next round, which I mean, I can't imagine Napoli lose to Gink, but so it, it, it's more Nap- of a Napoli Carlo Park. Ancelotti. Go ahead. N- N- Napoli are parking the bus for the whole game anyway. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, I, to be honest, with you, I didn't. Re- I, as I said, I keep saying, yeah, I, I didn't see why we needed to add a sort of six there, um, mm. because as I said, as Jason Henderson was just running around like headless chicken, um, up and down the right hand side, uh, you know, but. But He's but not sorry practice. sorry to interrupt. But you yes. know, with the thing is with Henderson, what he doesn't do is, is give the ball away too much, and I think that's what what Klopp likes about him. Uh, a lot of the times, Ox has given the ball away. To be honest, I mean he's good. He's good going yeah. forward, but he gives yeah. the ball away a lot. And yeah. and and right now, currently, every team is is dropping back and and waiting for a counter. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And if you give the ball away that much. The chances of your position scoring is, it just goes higher and higher. So I think that's, that's why yeah. maybe Klopp doesn't start him off. Mm. I, f- I, f- starts. I feel like I need to go back and watch some Brighton games to really learn how they play. I'm, I'm assuming against us they'll they'll be more defensive. Um, be. They've got they they've gotten some some decent wins to be honest. Yeah, yeah I hope I hope as well. Isn't it? But I still yeah. don't know like what how they really really play. You know what I mean? You because assume a team like that would be defensive. Expensive. They're more expensive than what yeah. they're. Oh, they are. Okay. Then 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 they will try to play it because I think Chris Hughton last year he was just he he fell off near the end and obviously he was yeah. playing this defensive football. And yeah, I mean this this manager because he was at Swansea, wasn't he? Graham Potter, mm. yeah. and he was at Osterson's, I think as well. So he's coming and he's trying to play this sort of. Um, he came with, he came with a three four three for me. Like, coming with that like, four four two, he's playing these. These um sort of young strikers up front and a couple of young players in there, so it's just a few things up. But against United, the way they try to play expansive football, they yeah. open and then United they lost, and I don't think they'll do that. I don't think they'll do that against us. Um, yeah. um well, to, where is it tomorrow? Or no, Saturday. Sorry. Uh, so I don't think they'll do that against us. Um, but I, th- yeah, I, th- they, I, th- I think we'll still win anyway. But yeah, they've had some decent results. They they beat Spurs three 0 Beat Everton. Beat Norwich, yeah. They beat Spurs 3 0. Yeah. Damn. Yes. Okay. Beat Everton 3 0. Mm. Beat Norwich 2 0. Yeah, so they've been they they're in decent form. Yeah. Bar bar their loss to United. They've been doing pretty good. Yeah. Uh I, yeah, the worst moment in that game uh against Napoli was um not even Fabinho going down, it was him getting back up, but, but you can tell he just couldn't get around the pitch and it's yeah. just like damn man, this is this might be bad. And when he when he pulled out the challenge as well, I don't know who it was. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I remember that. So he, you could just tell. I mean, it's, not you good. Just, yeah. it's not something that you can run off. You know, it's not, it's not like a little twist of a, of the ankle. You know, we've all we've all had those before playing football. You can run those off in ten minutes. You know, this is much more serious than that. So, so yeah. So Gary, I know you have usually have a pretty ga- a pretty good gauge on um, uh, the games and who we're playing. So. If if we're let's just say worst case scenario it's it's closer to six weeks, mm-hmm. what game are we looking for him to be back on? How many games is that? If it's six weeks, then we're looking for him to be back for Spurs away. Yeah, Spurs. Oh wow! Like I think the is that the eleventh of January, something like that. I think it's the eleventh of January. That's on a, that's on a Saturday. So and then we've got United after that, and all Wolves away after that. So we're looking for for him to be back then. I mean, we need him for that match. 
especially that match. I mean, that's definitely a match we need him back for. Um, but I mean, even that before that, you know, Leicester away, that's a tough game on Boxing Day, especially after the trouble. Yeah. Especially after two games from coming back from Qatar, that's a tough, tough game, man. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's a kick in the balls, really, isn't it? But we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll, yeah, I, I I think, and I think you guys probably agree. Obviously, no one wants Fabinho to be out, but I, I think we'll be fine, especially if we can get some consistency in, in someone, whoever that is, um, playing in that, in that sixth role. Uh, I, I, we, we just have a team full of great players, so I feel like if everyone else is doing their job, collectively helping each other, then it should be fine. I think um, yeah. the creativity that Fab uh, would bring, uh, we, we're going to have to really – I mean, this is going to be a period of games where I think Trent Robinson had to play – the play out of their minds as far as football creativity and, and not only that I think we we have to step up defensively as well because yeah man no definitely we've been definitely. leaking too many goals definitely that that that, that there's need to be there's need to be improvement on that anyway you know and not being able to have a clean sheet and lord knows how long when's the last time we had a clean sheet was that against well with 11 games it's Sheffield United wasn't it oh fuck damn wow I mean that's that's our worst run I think in 21 years 11 games out of clean sheet but I think we're I don't know how we're, but we're top now, and we're top. We haven't lost the game in the Premier League, and, but we, we haven't we haven't lost the game in the Premier League in like what we haven't lost the game in since January, or we haven't lost the game in Premier League this season, right? And we've got, we've got our worst clean sheet record in 21 years. I don't know how that works out, but <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take it, man. As long as we winning, you know, it, I'll, trust I'll, yeah. Yeah. we've been winning a lot of games two one. You know, it's like because we, we've been starting games off very slowly and like. It's okay if you start games on slowly if you're not going to concede sloppy goals. You know? Right, right, right. If you build right. a goal down, you know, we, we came back into Villa, we came, we came back against um, uh, Palace, but there's going to be a moment where we're going to drop two points. You know, we're going to only get the one goal, just like the Napoli game. So we can't keep on going 1-0 down because there's been too many times we've gone 1-0 down, um, especially recently. So, you know, United, Spurs, 1-0 down. We went United, 1-0 down, Spurs, 1-0 down. Palace, we could have gone one 0 down if it wasn't for VR. Uh, we were one 0 down against Napoli, one 0 down against Villa. You know, one 0 to someone else. I'm missing. I don't know. I can't remember. But you know, these are the games. Too many games recently. So we need to just um, cut the cut these little errors because we're conceded as a we're, we're conceded one goal per match. You know, but these 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 goals they're all going to add up and they're, they're going to be costly at that one point, which is going to mean us dropping two points here or there. But as I said, it's it's. it's we need to just cut out these mistakes um, and then just start getting some more goals and just, you know, get on the front foot a bit more. As I said, Brian, it's a big chance for us to, to just kill the game early because the Everton's, the Everton game is the one I really want to go out there and, you know, put in an electric performance in that game. You know, we've got two home games now and hopefully just go go win both of them. Is it, It's a late kickoff, isn't it? Yeah, it's like 8.15, because it's, um, it's obviously in the UK. Um, Amazon Prime is um, showing it, mate. You know, it's, um, oh, yeah, forget about it. They've got, they got United Spurs game at half seven, and then they got the, a Liverpool Everton game at seven, uh, 8.15. So I, I haven't got Amazon Prime, so I'm, I'm going to have to buy it for the month. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, actually. Uh, is, it, is it showing it over there in the, in the US? Or yeah? yeah, but if it's Amazon Prime, it's probably Amazon Prime everywhere. And I don't think we... Actually, maybe we do. But I don't, there might be like a special package you got to buy uh, just to... Yeah, I don't know. 30 days free trial. Is that 30 days free, 30 days free trial? Yeah, I, I had to look into it and see. Um, I, just found out, I, just, I just found out again that this weekend... They're showing we the go... as well. Oh, really? They're showing, yeah, no, yeah no, this weekend's a blackout in the UK as well. It's 3 o'clock. Yeah, I mean, it's shit, 3 o'clock for some reason. I don't know why we're, we're, we're 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock against Villa, 3 o'clock against... Palace, three o'clock against Brighton, three o'clock against Bournemouth in a couple of weeks. I don't understand really. I don't know why we're three o'clock. It's crazy that, that I feel like this season, more than any time recently, it's been a lot of games. Liverpool being the best team in England, somehow there's been more than more than a couple black blackouts. Yeah, I don't know. Like, should, should, like shouldn't they, shouldn't they be prime time TV? I don't know. But just I'm just gonna have to stream on on Twitter. Yeah, you figure <laughs> out a way. <laughs> figure out a way to, to to watch it, but uh. But, but yeah, like, man. Everton's the game that like quick just like, Everton's the game. I just want to get this Brian game because I think like Kato because I don't think Everton. I don't think I've never seen Champion Henderson start as two eights because I've never seen that happen. I don't think it's gonna happen because I've never yeah, seen him on the left side of the field. So when people say, "Oh, you know, we have got let's play Wijnaldum, Champion Henderson," that's not gonna happen unless Champion Henderson plays a six because 
Henderson and Wijnaldum both play on one side and it's on the right side. You know, I've never seen mm, them. Good point. Side, so it's not going to happen. Um, wait, 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 wait. But haven't we had... We, they both play on the right side, but haven't we had a situation where we had Fab, Genie, and Hendo? Never. No, Fab, Fabinho, Genie, and Hendo. Yeah, well... Um, yeah, but, yeah, We've yeah. never had Hendo and Ox. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah, because Wijnaldum can play on the left side. Easily, you can play, but it's like Milner. Milner and Ronaldo can play right and left side. Um, you know, they, they, they switch. But when, it's, when it comes to Henderson, Keita, Chamberlain, Keita's on the left always, and, Cham- and Henderson and Oxley Chamberlain's on the right. So, and Henderson is nailed on to start the derby, and Ronaldo is definitely going to start the six. So, who's going to play? Because, Be the uh, extra guy, yeah. Chamberlain obviously can't, uh, can't play, but he's never played there before. You know what I mean? sort of a, He's that sort of guy that's on the right and to cut in and or to go down the right and swing across to you now and take a shot on you know he's that sort of player so as I said Keita may start the game against Brighton you know or Lalana as much as the pain to say Lalana may start on Saturday which right I think we I think we did this early but I forgot so who who was the give me who's the, who's the midfielder do you think Klopp will go with Lalana in the six and then and then I what said, I said Lalana I think Winnie Ginny six and then uh, Milner and Hendo. What, you, think Genie, you think Genie 6, Milner, and you think that's what Klopp will go with? That's what you yeah. want? Yeah. No, I think that's what Klopp will go with. Mm. Uh, ideally, I'd love, to, I'd love to see Naby start, but I, I can't see him, I can't for see him which, starting. For, for which game, um, did you say Everton or Brighton? Brighton. Mate? Brighton for Brighton. Brighton. All right. I, th- I think what you do is, I think you might go Lallana as a 6. Um, mm. it's, just, it's just, you know what I mean? It's just one of those games where you just, yeah. Yeah. you know, Lallana, Brighton. Um, then I think you'll go with Wijnaldum, and I think you might go with Keita. Lallana, mm. mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to tell what Klopp's going to do, man. I, I, honestly, I think it'll be Lallana, Genie, Hendo. I think the only yeah, person that yeah. we see out is, is you know, Fabinho because he's hurt, and then he'll just shove Lallana in there and have Genie and Hendo play the usual. That's what I think I'm going to see. I mean, I, right. if we see Lallana, Milner, Henderson, I know we all trust Klopp and we love Klopp, but I'm going to lose my mind if I see that. <laughs> I'm going to lose my whole mind if I see that. Seriously. We saw that against Villa. <laughs> Didn't we? And we did. That's what I'm saying. Like that's bro. Won that, won that game, but I mean, you can see in, in, in the match reaction, the play rating. <laughs> yeah, that's not, yeah, that that that. But you know what? Uh, it, this wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, we know them. We know the game. It was we know them. Henderson. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It wasn't Milner. But but I I can for some strange reason I can see Klopp doing it. But I think he'll go genie. I don't think. I don't think the match matches. Say again. I don't think Milner will start back-to-back matches in my opinion. Yeah, you're probably right on that. You're probably right on that. Um, I think Henderson needs a rest too, as well. To be honest with you, I mean, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, that's, he does. That's, and he's been sick recently too, so. Yeah. 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 Re- I'd rest him. I'd rest him until May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a serious rest. Um, yeah, bro. But uh, no, I mean that's a good point, and and again, th- th- this is where you you feel like. Maybe we can see Naby. And, and again, I just think if Naby starts in this game at the weekend, he has got to have a great game. He has yeah. to, man. He has, I'm, not, I'm not even necessarily saying scoring a goal. That would help. But he's just got to look good. And I think yeah. for, for himself, for Klopp, for the fans, but but more so for himself. But I just think he's got to give Klopp a reason to be like, all right, look, I, I see your back. Cool. Um, I'm going to give you a run of games. All you got to do is stay fit and not get an injury. Which, yeah. I mean, obviously that's that's easier said than done. But. I think he's just got to, if he starts against, even if he doesn't start, if he comes on at any point in that game, he's got to make the best of it. Now, Klopp likes to do these last-minute subs, so I'm not going to expect anything in five minutes if he, that's what he gets. But if he gets a substantial amount of time, say 20 minutes or more, he's got to show something. He's got to show something. And I think if he does, I know it's Brighton, but I think if he does, that could really give him some uh, confidence, some momentum going for the rest of the season because we're going to need him. We're going to need everybody at this point. Also, uh, what, yeah, when he, when he signed, right, when K is signed for Liverpool, mm-hmm. We thought, because listen, you know me like you know me like um, over the past few years, like we've been speaking. You know I'm not Hendo's big biggest fan. You know I'm not even close to that. Um, and I've you know I think he's against City. I thought he had a good game, but as a he hasn't been great this season. You know what I mean he has not been even close to great this season. You know I think he's especially the past couple months. The he hasn't. He hasn't been great since Chelsea. Yeah, I last mean, season. That was the last. That was the last good game he played for me. Yikes! 
thing is, like, he came into the sort of, um, when he came into the sort of eight role, um, you know, we thought, oh, it's Hendo back on 2014. That's never going to happen. He hasn't, but what, mm. he, hasn't got the, he hasn't got the energy to do that anymore. There's a reason why he gets subbed off like 60, 70 minutes in, in these sort of big games because he's knackered. He hasn't got that same sort of um, physical, that, sort of, that same sort of energy anymore running up and down. He can't do that, bro. He's, he's but shy. he does it. But you, you, you say he can't do it, but that's what he does, though. No, he does it. But I mean, I'm talking about like cause for 90 minutes, great performances like he used to do for 13-14 because 13 yeah. percent was better than 18-19, in my opinion, right? Um, and he does he does do it, but as I said, he gets subbed off 60 minutes. He got subbed off against Spurs, got 60, 60 minutes against 70 Old Trafford because in these big games you know there's so much running so much energy he's put so much energy that's it he's knackered and the thing is Ronaldo never gets subbed off in these sort of big games he's that's the same age that you know Ronaldo's much more fit than him um, than Henderson right and he was knackered going up and down that right hand side against um, Napoli yesterday uh, right back right wing so and I thought yeah I mean he, he, he's just he's not my favourite player but when Nab- when K came in, I thought surely, surely he's gonna bench Henderson. Surely he's gonna bench Henderson. So surely he's gonna um, bench the light. He's gonna. See, he's I, gonna- I, 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 sometimes that was never gonna. That, sometimes that was never gonna happen though. Even yeah. if Naby was on his game, I just feel like I can't see Klopp benching Hendo for a long period of time. I just can't see it. I'm not talking about benching him like. Oh, okay. Get him out of the team. I'm talking about him not being involved as much as he currently is. As much as he is, yeah. Yeah, and he's just he's way too involved in my opinion. He's way too involved in this team, in my opinion. And I think for what he does, he gives it all. But to be honest with you, when everyone is on their game, his all would not get into this team. When no. everyone is on their game, his all would not get into this team. I think if if we're talking about ability, if we're talking about sort of the balance of the team I think a midfield of Fabinho, um, Wijnaldum, Keita is a brilliant midfield. Of Fabinho, Oxley, Chamberlain, and Wijnaldum is a brilliant midfield. It's got a perfect balance build of everything. You know what I mean? I'm not saying Henderson. You know, I'm not saying Henderson shouldn't be um, uh, playing um, games. I think you know he, he's he, he's a good player. You know, he does he does what he can, and he can play and he can. Um, you know, he's certainly a big part of this squad, but I think he's too big, too big. Um, careful, we, careful. We, we don't want to upset Jason. Careful. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think he's too much of a part uh, in this pod, if I'm honest with you, just in my opinion. Do you reckon, do you reckon, it's, do you reckon that's to do with him being the captain, though? I mean, possibly. I mean, obviously, I think, in my eyes, Van Dijk's always been the captain. I mean, I saw Henderson shouting yesterday. He had a shocking game yesterday. And yeah, he's just yeah. shouting at people... Like you know, that's what get him. That's what gets my nerves. I think that's the most. Thing right. <laughs> I, I knew you're it. gonna go to there. I knew you're gonna go there, bro. <laughs> I said, I've said it before. He's a, he's a Flaminio of Liverpool, isn't he? You know, he's that sort of player that just shouts. He, sh- he shouts at he shouts at players when he's not doing his own job. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? That, that's what that's what Flaminio used to do for Arsenal. You know, um, shout everyone, but never never did his job properly. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not, this, I'm not, when I see Henderson, I'm just not inspired. I thought yesterday he was shocking, um, you know, had an awful game. You know, I think City had a good game, went off, put on a good ball, worked hard, 60 minutes, came off, you know, and Palace against him. All these, just a job, which is, which is obviously instructed by the manager, but I just think we, but, could get, we could get much more in that position. But on, on that, though, <laughs> this is more a devil's advocate, but I'm kind of being silly, but... Is there something that maybe we're just not seeing? Because he is doing a whole lot of damn yelling. <laughs> this dude is doing a whole lot of finger pointing and direct. I'm like, bro, maybe we're not seeing something. I don't know. Maybe it's something on the pitch tactically that we just we we're, we're ignorant to. I don't know. No, I, I think, a lot of yelling. I think I think for Klopp, I think for Klopp, the main thing with Hendo is he keeps the ball well. You know, that's yeah, that's yeah, the one yeah. thing I can give him. He keeps he's not risky. Well. He? He's not yeah. risky. No, he's not. No. no, he's not. But that's the same thing that we kind of get on him about about his sideway passing him. Not being enough of, of a, you know, we had a brother named Salim on earlier, and he was saying how, you know, what Naby does have is that kind of risky uh, decision making that could go wrong, could go bad, but he's he's willing to take that risk. And I yeah. think he referenced the United game. And that's one thing that Henderson just doesn't really doesn't do, do yeah. too much. I mean, that's my club likes him. Not too much, not at all. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but, but like, like, but like, like I was saying earlier, Klopp, 
Klopp seems like a like a system guy. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean. So I think the players have a certain way of which they they're taught how to play in training. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think he likes when you deviate from that too much. Yeah, I mean to be honest, the whole team the whole team do do these back passes and side passes. If you if, if, you, if you if you analyze the game, mm-hmm. the pass from Robbo to to Van Dijk is probably the most <laughs> I yeah. see every game. Yeah. Yep. Do you know what I mean? I rarely yeah. see yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I think I, I think to be honest, I, I love club system, but I think we're with the players we've got on our books we're capable of playing much, much better football. Yeah, yeah. Much, much better football. But do, it do works. You, it works, yeah. so you, you can't really complain, can you? Do do you think at times we become too predictable? In other words, like if Trent at least it feels this way. I mean, now that Fabinho's out too, but if Trent isn't having a good game or, God forbid, he's hurt or he's benched yeah. like he was the other night for whatever reason, or same thing with Robertson, do you think we're too predictable at that point? Do you feel like, because that's where our creativity creativity comes from, that teams feel like, yeah. okay, we got him now? Yeah, I think so, because when if you realise, when, when Trent is having a bad game or, or maybe a not-too-good game, if you notice that the front three... Almost, it's, it's almost like they have to create chances for themselves. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And it, it completely nullifies the midfield. There is no midfield because most of the time teams are sitting back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they, they, they have know how to break them down. Yeah, they don't have the quality to break them down. So it's like you, you get you get Salah running it, running into players, kicking the mm. ball at people's feet. You know what I mean? Yeah, so and, and 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 you find it's it's basically only Robo and Mane doing anything effective on the pitch. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was a little. I thought it was a little harsh. I saw people getting on uh, Salah for the game the other night. Um, um, I think he was okay. He had some nice nice touches, but like yeah. I said, it's, it's it's difficult, especially when you're up front to, to create your own chances. Yeah. <laughs> you need you need a midfielder to put in a ball for you. Yeah, or 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 no fullbacks as well. You know, there's no yeah. Joe. Well, I mean, when you're playing Henderson, when you're playing when you on this on that side, you had Henderson and Joe Gomez. I mean, it's, that's not it's, 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 yeah. There's I mean, no efficiency there. You're basically start for you start for service, and especially when Firmino's having to drop so deep to get the ball, and there's nothing happening. You're coming up against someone so dominant like Kulabali. It was always going to be tough, very tough. Um, but even so, as I said, we should have. We, we, you know, we could have won that game yesterday. Anyway, um, I just didn't think we, we started quick enough. I just think we didn't get into rhythm, you know. And when we did, it was five minutes until the, the end of the first half. We played quite well for, for the last five minutes of the half. Got yeah. the goal. We never really kicked on, which I thought we we might do. We never kicked on after the goal. So, yeah, I mean, and then just back on the field quickly, as I said, you know. Back then, you know, uh, Aaron, you said we might be getting, are we too predictable? Um, and there is a certain element of that because, uh, you know, I think, like, we, we, the way we scored so many late goals, um, and it's it's not to do with, there's nothing to do with luck here because obviously the way you, when you, you know, when you, you make you make your own luck, isn't it? Yeah, you make your own luck. I mean, now you understand, now you understand that when we used to say, oh, you know, they're so lucky back in 10 years ago, you, you think about it, they made their own luck. You look back when you do it yourself, then you sort of realize, you know, you know that those or what United and Fergie did was was fantastic and world class. Yeah. So yeah. and and things well. But it's gonna come to a point where, like, I don't think we need to be these late winners. I think we've got the ability in our squad to be killing these teams early, um, or to have the game wrapped up by fifty minutes. You know, we're just. Just, you know, just being a bit more focused because as I said we're conceding too many goals, um, or too many slot goals. Um, you know, even if it is one goal match, you know, there's, there's a chance that we might win a game one nil. We haven't seen any more one nil wins because we, we keep on having to get that extra goal to win two one. Yeah. So we couldn't see out. You know, we couldn't see out to get a one nil win. We had to go concede the goal and do it the hard way again. You know, we're not making life easier for ourselves. Let's just say that. Um, and as I said now. We've got to get a few games now, Brighton, uh, Everton, you know, we need to start racking up some clean sheets, you know, and, and what do what, what what do you what do you put the lack of clean sheets down to? Do you reckon it's like the high line? I mean, I'm not too I can't really pin my finger on what it is really. Like, 
know. I don't know. Like the other day, if you look back at the goal, Napoli, you know, that's just a bit of a different one with the Van Dijk was in the position. But if you talk about, if you look back at Palace, you know, like Lovren gets, I think Lovren, um, I think Benteke gets past Lovren too easily, he puts in a yeah. ball. So just a bit mean. The City ones are consolation. You know, the Villa one, that's just poor defending from a set piece. You know, that was very poor. Um, well, what other goals we can see? I mean, the Spurs one was very poor. Henderson gives the ball away. We, you know, we um, we can't get a tackle. Ronaldo goes to the ground. Fabinho goes to the ground. We can't tackle Sissoko. Gets get and 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 obviously Kane gets the rebound. Even the United one again caught on the counter attack. So I'm not too sure what it is at the minute, but we just can see too many it's silly, silly, yeah, silly goals. Like the Chelsea one as well, where Kante just we're just allowing Kante to run through our team. To run through, yeah. Things that we should put now. Newcastle, Jet Jet Row Williams. We let Alexander Arnold let some kindness on his right foot, shows him inside and lets him have a shot. You know, if you if you the obvious thing to do there is push him on his outside, you know, um and let him get the ball in the box. Don't let him have a shot on his right foot. You know what I mean? So it's little sloppy errors from maybe it's individual, maybe it's a collective, I'm not too sure what it is, but we need to cut them out. We need to start making life easier for ourselves because We've we've started the season really really well, thirty seven out of thirty nine points. You know we're in a very strong position, nine points clear of City, and obviously as City got their tough games coming up, but we need to start making life easier for ourselves. I think we can, and hopefully with the likes of Kate and Chim, they come with a bit more creativity, a bit more drive in that midfield. We can start creating more chances and be more clinical, and hopefully the defense, just, you know, just keep keep keep. Let's start keeping some clean sheets now. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how we how we play without Fabinho because I haven't seen them in a long time. So yeah, long, long time. Long, long time. <laughs> I mean I think the only time we saw that was Villa and what? Uh, Arsenal? Um yeah well Arsenal not having not having fab. Uh, well if you're talking about the Premier Ars- League Arsenal Arsenal oh Premier yeah, Premier League yeah 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 he hasn't played in the yeah I mean Ars- Villa I think what was Arsenal uh, was the Ars- other game can't remember. He played every game last year, apart well, obviously apart from the start of the season, he basically started every single game, didn't he? So, I mean, Napoli, we saw a bit. Napoli, we didn't see too much because Napoli basically part of the bus. So, I want to see when maybe a team that I want to see when a team like Leicester comes um, to town, you know, uh, when when, it, when when we when we go to the King Power, see how how we react um, without having Fabinho, uh, see how that midfield responds. So, that's gonna be interesting. But even before that, you know. We still got many more games before that to um, to pick up some points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, looking forward to it, Brighton. I mean, you got. I'm looking forward to all these games coming. That's what we live for. Um, and like I said, man, just in closing, I think uh, it's it's a heavy blow. You can't really get around from that. But um, I, I think we have enough to uh, to to make it work. And um, that really just reassure us of how, how strong this team is. You know, with the goalkeeper situation, we, we shored that up. Uh, Matt said, Lavern came in, as we know. Uh, thankfully, the little knock Salah had wasn't, wasn't too long, so that was cool. Yeah. Um, can't aff- I mean, we can't, really can't afford any more injuries, though, to be honest. And um, hopefully, hopefully this is the last of it for a while. And, um, you know, the guys who maybe have been on the fringes and haven't been playing can, can step up. We're going to need that. And if that happens, then I think we'll be good. So, uh is there anything else you guys wanted to add to it, or you guys pretty good on it? No, maybe um, a prediction for Brighton. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, I think, um, yeah, Gary, what was yours? Did you give one earlier when we spoke? Yeah, I thought three now. Three now, okay, yeah, yeah. Three now. I didn't know it could be. Oh, actually, Fabinho is uh, suspended anyway. I don't know what I'm on about. Yeah, he's suspended. Yeah. Uh, never. You know what I mean? I don't. I surely won't concede to Brighton. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what do you think, Jason? Score prediction? I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, every game so far has been been tough, to be honest. I see. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, you know what? I think I think it'll continue that way, to be honest. So yeah, you get ready yeah. for it. Yeah, I see. I see another another two one, a two one result, maybe three one. But I see another tough game. I see another tough game. Are you still sticking with four 0 Yeah, man, I'm sticking with that. Oh uh, hell no. Yeah, with it. <laughs> right, and that's and that's more of just what I want to see. What I think will happen will probably be something like you know two one three one. Two, but one, yeah. I just feel like we're, we're due for a smacking of somebody and a clean sheet. So why not have it against against <laughs> against? So, I, right. think we'll, I think we'll win by two clear goals at least. I hope so. I hope so. That'd be nice. But I, I really, really want this clean yeah, sheet, man. Yeah. It's been way too long. 
It's just been I'm way too long, yeah. I'd be surprised if you can see it's from a stuffy corner or something, because that's what we've been doing recently. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but at the end of the day, if we, if, we, if we have 40 points by the end of the night, and hopefully Fatty Bruce can do us a favour against City. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be... Are there any other good matchups in the in the league uh, this weekend? Anybody know about? Leicester Everton, Marcus Silva under pressure. Oh God, this joke, man. This I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that was a good matchup. That was going to be a good uh, matchup. It's a good matchup. It's going to be a good matchup when Leicester tear them apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't see that game going any other way. To be honest, um, oh. I mean Everton are just so bad, man, so bad. But no... they'll come play. They'll, they'll come and play us, and they'll they'll and play and they'll well, play their heart out. Isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. There's, a, there's no really, like, you know, good games. These two teams, you don't know who to win. Because, I mean, Leicester, they're going to beat them. I think we're going to beat Brighton. I think City will probably beat Newcastle. Chelsea will beat West Ham at home. United you know, will beat Villa at home. But then Norwich against Villa, I think that's probably a good matchup. That's more of a realistic matchup. You know, Norwich against Villa, especially Arsenal are losing. Sorry, Norwich against Villa. Norwich against Arsenal. I don't know about Norwich against Arsenal. Um, that's going to be. I think Emery might be gone by then because that's what I'm hearing. So he looks like he's, he's on his way out. Un, oh, Una Emery? Yeah. yeah. Like they just lost to um, uh, Frankfurt. No, oh, no, no, not Frankfurt. Oh, who is it? Who did they lose to? Freiburg. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, they're done. They're, 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 I, don't, I don't know what's up with that, man. I, I don't know what it is as well. Maybe it's, it's just Liverpool, but it seems like teams are just playing their heart out against us. I mean, since, since, since we oh, beat no, Napoli, I always say that, since, man. Since yeah. we beat Napoli that 5-0, I think that was that preseason we beat them. Yeah. But since then, well, they, they've, they've been on a... Season, didn't they? Say that again? They beat us in preseason, didn't they? A 3-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I'm, I'm talking about, I think it was two years ago preseason. We beat them five. Since then... Yeah, yeah we beat them five, beat... and then we lost this year as well. And we season. lost, yeah. It's, it's, it's just, and that's it. People talk about Palace being a bogey team. Yeah, Napoli are both. Napoli, know, bloody hell. Thank, thank God we haven't played them every year, though. They get, they get beat by Arsenal. Uh, Napoli got our number, man. Yeah, I mean, Arsenal went bad at them. You know, home and away. Bad at them, yeah. Guess, I mean, if Arsenal can beat two clean sheets against Napoli all the way, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Cause every, everybody's got that, down the years, everybody's got that one team that just, they, you know, and Napoli's that team for us. It is what it is. I mean, I don't know if it's matchup issues or what, but we, we always seem to struggle with them. I don't, not really, I can't put my finger on why that is, but. I think you know. it's Angelotti, isn't it? I mean, he he hasn't won a game in like six games. He's not even in the top four, you know. And he comes Anfield and just you know, it's like it's like small club. He's, like he's still he's still hurting from two thousand and five, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, possibly that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it probably is from this time. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this game, man. I can't wait, and uh, hopefully we it won't be the last time we get you on, Jason. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do you know what it is? I, I need to turn my notifications on. on notifications oh, on no, I got the issue too sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah. Every time I come on, you are know, already done. But yeah, I'm, I'm literally falling asleep now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you guys go, man. I appreciate you guys making time. Uh, I'll talk yeah, to you guys yeah. probably Saturday. Okay, cool. Yeah, bro. All right, see you. All right, see you later, bro.